words. They don't just communicate thoughts. They reveal the hidden things in our hearts. They don't just communicate ideas. They create worlds. The mouth and the words we say are a creative force that is not only used all the time, but everywhere we go. Our words are the very essence of how the Creator made us. Join us as we discover the essence of man and the power of speech. Hello, welcome to the Essence of Man and the Power of Speech, and we are on day 93, and we're going to talk about uh, where interruption is needed. Now, we talked a little bit about this yesterday, about when, uh, or in day 92, uh, yeah, day 92, uh, where sometimes a person when they speak evil speech, the listener doesn't do anything about it. But like a person who eats un- unkosher food that's not kosher, they spit it out immediately, and so should we spit out, quote unquote, Lashon Hora, meaning that, that um, when we hear it, we need to stop it immediately. As if you were eating at a restaurant and tasted something bad, you didn't care what kind of restaurant it was, you're going to spit it out. Well, today we're going to talk about when interruption is needed. Now, uh, I want us to read. I want us to read in Proverbs 26. It says, uh, verse 20, where no wood is, there the fire goeth out. Okay, so where there is no talebearer, the strife ceases. I'll read that one more time. Where no wood is, there, therefore the fire goeth out. So where there is no talebearer, the strife cease. Wood adds fuel to the fire. And so the talebearer, the gossiper, adds fuel to the strife. Same principle. You take away the wood, you take away the fire. You take away the talebearer, the gossiper, you take away the strife. And so one should avoid association with groups where known gossip is going to happen. First of all, that's going to protect you. If you get involved in something, if you are in a situation to where you hear it, uh, especially with the people that you know, spit it out. You understand that by yesterday's. And this is where interruption is needed. Hold on. Stop right there. I I, I don't want to hear this. I I would prefer not to talk about this. Um, Leviticus 19.17 says, Reprove your fellow. And one should interrupt a person who is speaking Lashon Hor. But you don't have to do this rude or, or, or mean or anything because this is about teaching. This is a teaching moment. Okay? And so what you do is you say, oh, hold on just a minute. I, I really don't want to hear that. And here's why. Um, this is if you're in a, in a private situation. The, the, if you're in a public situation, in other words, where there's a lot of people in the same room, uh, say you're with a group of friends at your house or wherever, and you know, and you say, "I don't want to hear that." Or uh, can we can we just change the subject for for a moment? Or you divert that subject, okay? And then privately, you go to that person and you say, "Let me explain why I did that." Here's what I've learned. Here's what I know. More importantly, this is what the scripture says. You know, it's important that we do our best to avoid it, to stop it immediately. In doing so, we are saving a brother. Okay? Uh, We're saving a a fellow believer from falling into the traps of uh, Lashon Hora, speaking evil. Uh, But again, correction 
should be done privately and in love. You've heard the you've heard the phrase a bad apple destroys the whole lot, the whole bunch, the whole barrel. Well, one sinner can ruin an entire group, meaning that one person speaking evil speech can cause the whole group to sin. And that's why, you know, interruption is needed. Um, Proverbs 26, 12 says, Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. Some people think their wisdom is beyond this right here. Okay. But here's the problem. Um, these are laws. They are spiritual laws. Meaning we reap what we sow with this. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it eat the fruits thereof. This is why the New Testament says constantly, backbiters, gossipers, slanderers are thrown in there with drunkards and adulterers, whoremongers, murderers, who shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Because as you know by now, evil speech is equivalent to the three great sins. And I would encourage you to go back to the other videos that talk about that. So in essence, what we're saying is, first of all, avoid groups where you know Lashon Hora is going to be spoken, number one. Number two, in the event that this happens, um, spit it out. In other words, stop, make an abrupt stop to it. And you can do that with, with, with skill, okay? Third thing is, try and help that person understand privately why you did what you did in order to save your own brother. Because remember, evil speech is affecting them in ways they may not know. Simple as that. And then, find something else to talk about. <laughs> hey, we'll see you next time on The Essence of Man and the Power of Speech. Have a good one.